Yeah, um, on the back of last week's performance, uh, bright, positive week. Um, you know, a, a much different vibe than uh, you can imagine after the LA game, and and lots of positives to take out of the game. So uh, I think we're moving in a in a nice direction, and it was certainly uh, a much better feeling to get back on track to a degree last weekend. And then uh, the bye week coming up next week. Uh, anything different in terms of preparations? Knowing you have the layoff coming up. Um, no, not really. I think once we get through this game, uh, there'll be uh, some consideration for you know what 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 the guys need in terms of recovery. We've had an awful lot going on. Um, you know, plenty of games in this early stage of the season, so uh, we're, we're just purely focused on this Philly game and obviously understand how challenging it can be. We've run into these a number of times, and it's always been uh, a very uh, competitive game. Great. Uh, ben, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned Philly. Uh, they're coming off a pretty impressive win against Minnesota. Um, what have you seen from them so far? Um, it, it seems like they're one of the more consistent teams in the league over the past couple of years. Uh, yeah, I, I think probably in the last five. Um, not much changes about the group in the way that they play, in their mentality, and certainly in the way that they apply themselves. Um you know, and not an awful lot of movement in terms of bodies as well. I know there were, you know, some chatter online about one or two players that might be leaving in the summer. And I think Bedoya and Wagner were at the, the top of that list in terms of where they might be. But suddenly everyone's back again. And I think they suffered probably as much as anyone um, in, the, uh, in the Champions Cup. I don't mean the results, I mean in terms of scheduling and what they were getting out of their league form, but they've certainly shown a really competitive edge as they've come out of that Champions Cup and at home, they're a very, very tough task. I think away from home, there can be one or two areas that understandably become a little bit more difficult, but I think in the main, we appreciate as much as anyone what they're about and Certainly from a coaching standpoint, there's a lot of respect for what they do. And then, um, I mean, just kind of looking back at last week against Columbus, definitely a, an improved performance from LAFC um, and, and felt like there were a lot of really positive things to build on. How do you turn that into maybe a, a, a full 90-minute performance that we maybe haven't really seen for a couple of weeks? Well, look, there's a, there's a couple of things from last week. Um, the shape change against Columbus I felt was important. It gave, I thought, some guys a little bit of clarity from the weekend before. And we saw some excellent performances. And I think up there was, you know, Jacob um, Schaffelbergs and probably Annabelle's within that, obviously a world-class goal as well. Um, this is a very different group and, and a very different task. The key for us is going to be finding some consistency um, certainly, you know, finding a good footing in the game against a side that will play very, very differently to Columbus. But in terms of actually getting on um, what I might class as, you know, a, a, a solid run, um, you know, seeing games out as, as, you, as you're suggesting there, I think we've also got to find a way to get some of these bodies back into the group. You know, they're going to be a key component, as we all know, to, you know, finding a, a, a bit more continuity and also a bit more confidence in seeing some games out. Um, you know, you, you get yourself in a good place and it's, it's happened on two or three occasions. We've got ourselves in front. Um, you know, either, either the experience or just the, the belief in putting three points on the board is not quite there for some of these players. And whilst I've been delighted with the way that they've gone about their business for the majority of the games, there's certainly, you know, a, a, a lack of real guile to, to see that 90 minutes through. So a couple of bodies back. Um, Lucas will certainly be in contention for this weekend. Joe comes back from suspension. Um, Tyler are being in and around the group towards the end of this week 
and we'll see how he is towards the weekend. Um, I think aside that, we're not going to see any of those other bodies at this point. I think training this week obviously feels a little bit different to the previous week where we're coming off of a pretty devastating defeat on the road um, to be able to come back home and have a much improved performance I think helped the team mentally a lot although the result didn't quite pan out the way we wanted to we wanted to bounce back with three points at home obviously but I think the the vibes are certainly better I think more than anything we're we're focusing on ourselves and trying to get back into um, you know a good groove and I think this is a great opportunity to do that as far as playing a hometown team I don't I don't know what time or what number of game this is against Philly in my career, but um, obviously it's always a little bit special. You, you grew up watching the team, whatever it may be, um, and guys have different examples of that throughout the league and throughout our team. So um, business as usual, looking forward to uh, riding the ship against a team that's competitive in our conference more than anything. Okay. Go ahead, bud. Yeah, Dan, I mean, we saw a, a different formation and set up against the crew. Uh, I'm just kind of curious, now that you are back to more of a normal – every weekend game schedule instead of Saturday, Wednesday, whatever, yeah. what, what that's like as far as your ability to work on kind of tweaks like that during the week um, and how kind of getting into more normal routine has been. Yeah, it's great. Obviously, that's ideal. Um, that's an ideal world for us to be able to go week to week and just have Saturday to Saturday. But um, a blessing and a curse of having a, a previous campaign that was successful and entered us into a competition that sort of made the schedule a little bit more condensed to start the year. So... That's been something that teams historically have struggled with. Obviously, we've had our own issues with it and opportunities more than anything to learn about the group and learn where we are. Um, unfortunately, on the injury side of things, we do have some guys that aren't available. I think every team deals with that throughout each season in their own way. Um, to have a lot of that stuff happen in short succession, have overlapping um, omissions from what would normally be a starting group is difficult and I think it gives opportunities to guys to step up and keep the team at a competitive level and those are opportunities that are hard to come by so for for us and for some of the guys that have been around I think it's more about empowering those players and those different iterations and combinations of of guys on the field into feeling comfortable and they're going out and getting the job done but certainly from a continuity standpoint it doesn't make things super easy but I think it forces us to adapt and something that we've been good at um, again, historically, but looking forward to getting some sort of groove here where we can get the same group of guys playing next to each other and getting wins. So I think that's our, our main goal right now. And then, I mean, obviously, depth over any season is pretty important. It, it does feel like maybe on, on the positive side, you've been able to kind of test some of that depth a lot earlier than normal. Uh, does that do anything for, for you guys on the field when you know that the guys coming in or maybe guys who are starting that haven't seen a ton of action before have kind of been tested more than usual? Of course. I think it's easy to say that depth is really important and it's something that every team values, but few teams are really having to be tested in that way, especially so early. So I do think while it's difficult and there are certainly moments and stretches here that we've had to navigate that have been a little bit more um, robust in terms of having to put certain lineups together and such, but... It, it just bodes really well for the future, knowing that we have guys that have early minutes and game experience. I think throughout the stretch of the season, you prefer that to happen now and to have guys knowing that they can accomplish certain things in certain roles, going into what's going to become a very important part of the season and then going into a playoff run later in the fall. Um, to have that experience now is, I think, extremely valuable. But that being said, I think it's not just about getting the opportunity, but capitalizing on it um, for individuals. But as a group, I think we just have to, to focus on ourselves and move forward and know that, like I said, each iteration and each new formation or combination of players, whatever it is out there, represents a, a new opportunity to showcase what we do have um, in terms of depth. And so I think it's something internally that we always feel great about um, and we haven't always had the opportunity to showcase it. So that is the silver lining of the situation that we're in right now to kind of have new faces and new combinations of guys out there, but um, the goal remains the same, and it's to put together a performance that looks and feels a lot more like us at home and ends in three points. Yeah, and then just last one for me. Um, you guys have had good stretches in games, and obviously against the crew last week was a pretty significant improvement from LAFC. Um, how do you turn some of those kind of good moments into a, a full kind of comprehensive 90-minute performance? 
Um, quite honestly, I think it's evolving mentally as a group to kind of have a killer instinct, especially at home. And I think the most important thing is to not have that sigh of relief when we go up a goal or where we score at home, whatever that may be, because um, that's a very important box to tick off that we all are really focused on scoring and scoring at home especially. But um, I think getting the next goal is incredibly important. And I think with any team, the more you prepare and kind of are concerned about solidifying a result or keeping a lead, I think you end up getting really close to falling into a trap of hoping and trying to defend against something that is in the form of another team coming trying to get the result back and try to even the score or go ahead. And if you sit there and wait for bad things to happen, sometimes they do. Um, and I think you can negate that by trying to, you know, be a little bit more of a killer. And I think that's something that this group can certainly improve on. And I think it's something we talk about and becomes an easier practice when you get one under your belt where you are able to extend a lead, especially at home. I think those types of results and performances where you're scoring multiple goals and putting a, an opponent to bed is, is really valuable for a team's mentality moving forward. So we're still at the early stages of the, of the season, especially here at home. And I think it's really important that we just focus on ourselves and making sure that as we move forward, we're doing so in the right fashion and playing a brand and a, kind of solidifying a identity that's going to serve us well come the fall. So I think right now we have the luxury of, you know, knowing that we have a lot of games left to play. But I think as we start to string a couple of good performances back to back and getting some validation in the form of results, I think we'll do a, a lot for us. Yeah.